Okay. <coughs> if the title of the shir, the Ezra Sashem was the Daf Kemara, this is, this is the beginning, and this is very, very important. So let's begin. Um, we began last time learning about the second Mesa Migdash, and let's quickly remember what we learned. If we could divide the second Mesa Migdash into the different parts, so we had 34 years was Paras. 180 is Yavon. And then 103 is Chashmanoi. Correct? So if we could just go it over very, very quickly. 34 years is Paras. What does Paras mean? Paras means that the Persian king, Daryavish, Daryavish ben Esther, um, is the one who gave them Rishus to build the second base Hamidosh. They built the second base Hamidosh. These 34 years were crucial. They had a the um, Anshei Knesset The Anshei was Mavata the Yitzhahara of Aved Zara. They introduced a new, a new way of, of living Judaism. Incredible. A new way of living Judaism. You're not connected. You have to daven. They gave us the words to say because otherwise we wouldn't be able to figure out the words ourselves. And they taught us exactly Asusi Yog They led us through this new way of living. That was the Atshik Nesach And then came Yovan Shemana Tzadik Mishyari Atshik invited Yovan, or rather met up with Yovan because of the Kusim, right? The people who lived on the top part of Eretz Yisrael. And they, and they instigated that, uh, that, that they're against Yovan. And therefore, Alexander Mukhtim came to go take over. And he ended up being very, very impressed with Shimon Atzadik. Impressed with Shimon Atzadik, and he went and invited Alexander Mukhtam to stay. And Yovan, he put Yovan into Eretz Yisrael. Now they have the challenges of Yovan. They have the challenges of now finally they have Zugais running Klai Yisrael, which, which Zugais really means a Machlaikis. They never ever had Machlaikis. It was the Machlaikis Rishayno, the first Machlaikis that they ever had, and that was Smicha on a Behema in on Yom Tif. So now we have Zugais, which is Machlaikis. We have Yovan, and then Antignish Yisaychi was a Talmud of, of Shimon Atzadik, and he had Tzadok and Baisis, and that was a Tztukim of Baisusim, and now suddenly there was, within Klai Yisrael, a new facet against the Chachamim. Then they also had the Kahuna Gedayla, with, with Chanyoy and Shimi, the whole Machlekes, and then the Kahuna Gedayla got dissipated, it was no longer um, uh, a very, very special, it was stolen away from the Yidden, and again, like almost the whole Yiddishkeit started to unravel, and started to unravel, and it took uh, finally 180 years later, um, Antioch is from the northern part, right from the Syrian Greeks, decided to take over the Egyptian Greeks. Lamaisa, he didn't, couldn't make it into the Egypt. They held him strong, but he did conquer Eretz Yisrael. He wanted to put his temple, he wanted to put his insignia onto Eretz Yisrael, and therefore he decided to change the culture, just get these Jews out of their tradition, make them good, healthy Greeks, and therefore he really, really imposed the Greeks to, he imposed the Yidden to be Greeks, and that's the story of Hanukkah, the whole story of Antiochus. And... And again, it, it was, uh, there was a period that literally the Beis Hamidosh was not even being used. Yushalayim was the capital of the Hellenistic culture, of the gymnasiums and the universities and, and just the whole uh, Goyesha culture. And that was the end of the 180 until finally the revolt came from the Hashmonai family and they chased them away. No, we're going through this very, very quickly. And now the Hashemite family is also like a hidden part that we don't really discuss so much. The Hashemite family took over for 103 years. The Hashemite was Matasyo Koyen Gadol, Hashemite. He probably did not even live during the Nase of Hanukkah. He already had died by the Nase of Hanukkah. Yudah Maccabee had taken it over, and unfortunately, all the five sons, one by one, were killed. And they didn't really live too long, but... Um, Shimon, Shimon Hashmonai is the last one to survive. Shimon survived and more or less his son Yechanan, it wasn't so simple, but his son Yechanan took over and his son Yechanan after 80 years became a Tzaduki. If the whole thing was only 103, so how did it be 80? I don't have a good answer. Maybe it means when he was 80 years old he became a Tzaduki or he was a Kayin Gadol for 80 years. I'm not exactly sure. The Gemara Yuma is Mashmah, the Shmeinim Shana of Yechanan Kayin Gadol. So he was, a, I don't know exactly how that works, but 
um, Yechanan, his son, was a Kohen Gadol for 80 years, and then he became a Tztuki. Also, his son Yanai HaMelech took over, and Yanai HaMelech was a Melech and a Kohen Gadol, and he flew into a rage against the Chacham, and when they started, you know, uh, trapping him, they started questioning if the validity of really he's a Kohen Gadol or not, he killed out all the Chachamim. His brother-in-law, his wife was Shleim Tzion, his brother-in-law was Shimon ben Shetach, and finally he had Charoto, Shleim Tzion managed to pull back Shimon ben Shetach and bring him out, and Yanai said, okay, let's get all the Chachamim back, and they moved back from Alexandria Shomitzrayim, from Bovel, and now Klai Yisrael flourished again in Eretz Yisrael. The Gemara and Tainis tells us that the days of Shimon ben Shetach were extremely, extremely special, special days. Those days of Shimon ben Shetach, like the rain came at the right time, and and uh, everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. Unfortunately, it was not a very long tkufa, maybe 10, 15 years of Shleim Tzion, the wife of, she- of Yanai, with her brother Shem ben Shetach, and they ruled Klai Yisrael in an incredible time. And this is all part of the 103 of the Chashmanoi. If I understand correctly, that's where we left off. And let's just finish off the 103 of the Chashmanoi. The one of the three of Hashemunayim, after Shem ben, ben Shetach, Shlem Tzion died, and Shlem Tzion Hamalka died, Shem ben Shetach was the Nasi, um, Shem ben Shetach was then the Nasi, and then Shem ben Shetach died, not long afterwards, came the next set of Zugais that was Shmai Avtalyan. Shmai Avtalyan had a very, very difficult time. Shmai Avtalyan lived in a time of Horkinus and Aristobulus. And it's, it's a Gemara. It's actually a Gemara in two different places in the Shas, goes through the story. But it's really, really a defining factor, this um, fight between Horkinus and Aristobulus. Yanei HaMelech had two sons, Horkinus and Aristobulus. Aristobulus was a powerful, powerful person. Um, Aristobulus was a, was a maniac. Aristo- I, I, I don't know if I can say these words. Aristobulus was a fighter. Aristobulus was a go-getter, and he conquered Yerushalayim, he took over the city of Yerushalayim, and he was in charge, and he refused to let his brother Horkinus come in, and Horkinus was mibachutz, aristublus mibifnim, the Gemara mentions this a few times, and he couldn't, Horkinus could not get his brother, Horkinus was a much more calm person, Horkinus was a what was a, was a much calmer person, and Horkinus, on the other hand, he made alliances, and this is the famous Gemara that says that um, Aristobulus inside, they simply didn't have any animals, they would lower down, this is a famous Gemara, they would lower down a, a box of money and they would take up uh, an animal and they, that would be the Shnei to meet them every single day. And one time they put in a Chazir, a Venat's Konov, and right, it put its feet into the, into the walls of Yushlaim, Venizdaza, Yushlaim, Arbamea, Paris, or whatever that means. And good, that was at that time. Again, Aristobulus is fighting Corkinus. And we have to appreciate, Aristobulus was very powerful. He didn't let Horkinus in. The only way for Horkinus to win was, and this we're going to learn many, many times, this idea, the only way for Aristobulus, uh, Horkinus to win was to make an alliance. And he made an alliance, and this, I'm going to say this because we're going to come to it at different times. It's a true story, but there was a... <laughs> You know, there was the, a guy, a guy said this, he, he worked in construction. They had to crack a piece of sidewalk. And there was this um, guy, big built fellow, and he was knocking the concrete. He just couldn't get the concrete going. And he's knocking, he's knocking, he couldn't crack it. And then the other worker, a short guy, an American, said, you know, hey, come, give it to me. I'll, I'll, I'll. So he gives one knock, two knocks, because, oh, I, I have. And he gives from the angle, a certain angle, boom, boom, the whole thing goes. And the other big guy looks at him and was like, he's working on this for a half hour, can't get this piece going. He was like, come on, can't use your brains for this. Gotta use your muscles. But sometimes if you use your brains, it's stronger than using your muscles. And that's a very, very big insight. So Aristobulus was, was the muscles, and Aristobulus could not, would not let Horkinus go in. So Horkinus, in order to win his brother Aristobulus, he made alliances. And he tried to be friends with him and gather help from him, gather help from him, and he ended up um, getting help from the Romans. And the Romans was a country, Rome, in Italy, and they were looking to conquer, and they were conquering, and they were starting to conquer. And it was the days of Pompey, and he reached out to Pompey and said, here, why don't you come and take over Israel? 
you know, he, his father was the king. Horkinus, again, Horkinus and Aristobulus are brothers. His father was the king, and he made an alliance, and he said, good, I can't conquer the city, and no problem. Now his alliances with him, the Romans, the Romans were able to knock out Aristobulus, and basically what happened was, um, Horkinus is the one who invited Rome to take over Eretz Yisrael, and Rome comes and takes over Eretz Yisrael. Now, suddenly, Rome is taking over Eretz Yisrael. Now they're taking over Eretz Yisrael, they're not here to... To, to fight the Eden. They're just, you know, happy to take over this covenant place called... That, they're happy to take over this covenant place called Eretz Yisrael, and they take over Eretz Yisrael, and now suddenly, the whole point is to find favor with the Romans. And everyone's trying to find favor with the Romans, and everyone's trying to be on the Roman side, and suddenly, out with the Hashemunayim, and there was a person named Antipater, and Antipater was actually a governor in the north, and he was friends with Aristobulus, uh, with Horkinus, and again, he also wanted to find favor in the Romans. He was also a shrewd fellow. He found favor with Horkinus. Horkinus, so now, you know, gave him a lot of power. He took over in the north. He also made favor with the Romans, and this Antipater became a great Gishmaka guy, and he was a lord, and he was a governor, and he took over half of Eretz Yisrael. He had a son whose name was Hordus, Herod the Great. And this Hordus was a maniac. There was nothing that could hold Hordus back. And Hordus was also very good. He always sided with the Romans. And by this time, already, Horkinus and Aristobulus are gone. And Hordus goes, and he finds favor he finds favor with the Romans, and Hordus revolts, and he kills out the Gemara Baal Basra, he kills out Kol Beis Hashemunoi, he kills out the entire Beis Hashemunoi. Actually, Antipater, his father, and this, he was actually an Eved the Beis Hashemunoi. Originally, they were an Eved the Beis Hashemunoi, and therefore they really had a halachas of Avodim, they weren't even complete Eden, they were simply Avodim. And he killed out the whole Beis Hashemunoi, and he was, and he, and he was friends with the Romans, he decided he was becoming a melech, he is taking over, and he would kill with, just by ease. He actually married the, do the granddaughter of Horkinus, Miriam, the granddaughter of Horkinus, and that way he felt like literally legitimate. He's a part of the Hashmanoi, just because he married the granddaughter. He ended up killing Miriam, killing all his children also. There was no one left from Hashmanoi done. He didn't mind killing everyone as long as he was power. He was in power, and that was Hordus, and Hordus took over. <laughs> The, the the whole entire thing. Actually, Hordus, beforehand, not, not long before, Hordus was, um, he had killed, killed Yidin who were in favor of the Romans. And the, the Sanhedrin caught him, and they put him, uh, they, 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 were, they damned him Lamisa, and they were gonna pass him Lamisa the next day. And really, it was very, very hard, because he was a powerful fellow. And Shmai Vavtalion was the Bezdin. Shmai Vavtalion were the Bezdin. And Shammai, their Talmud, was pushing that he has to be the Misa. And Shammai feared the ice, but they couldn't pass him in the Misa that night, that day, because they had to kill him that night. They decided they're going to do it tomorrow morning, and Hordus escaped. And that they never ended up killing Hordus, and all the trouble came that Hordus was on the loose. And that is Hordus. Hordus now takes over the Malucha, out Chashmanoi, and the Gemara Nava the Zara actually called this of Malchus 103 of Malchus Hordus. Now we could really call it 103 of, Ma of Romans. The, the, the trial of Hordus was, was a, uh, a Sanhedrin style. Was a Sanhedrin. Same, it was like a Yeah, one, yeah, no, he killed many, many, many of them. Was there a time in Eden of Or was it more like a. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is Where is this protest? I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember. The Shammai. The, 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 oh, and, and, all, and all the things, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I uh, no, what? No, he had they escaped later. later. No, not, not on the escaping, on the not pushing it, pushing it through. It, it, was, it was very hard uh, later. I, I don't know. I don't know. But they, they, this I saw in, in different places. Um, is it comes from Gemara? I'm sure it does. I'm, I'm bad. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember being a Gemara. But that was Hordus and Hordus now takes over the Malucha, and Hordus wanted to um, be a king, but he was not accepted by the Chachamim. Well, that makes a lot of sense. He was not accepted by the Chachamim, and therefore he finally got up, and why was he not accepted by the Chachamim? Because it says, Melech, Miker of Achecha talks to Melech Melech. Who's this guy? He's not Miker of Achecha, he's not a Kashra Yid, and therefore they refused to accept him. He decided the only way to deal with it, 
is to kill all the Chachamim. And Hordus went and killed all the Chachamim. And terrible, Hordus killed all the Chachamim. Who was living during that time? He literally changed everything. The Sanhedrin was bottled. Um, Hordus had put in first a lot of Tzlukim instead of the Chachamim in the Sanhedrin. Hordus was, was, was a maniac. Hordus was a maniac. He had no problem doing whatever he could in order to get power. And Eretz Yisrael was like desolate. Eretz Yisrael was desolate. Whoever could survive escaped. And everyone escaped. And finally Hordus um, had Bava ben Buta, right? The Gemara Bava Basra, Bava ben Buta, and he had blinded him. And the Gemara says the story, Bava ben Buta was there, and Hordas said, sat down next to Bava ben Buta, made believe he was somebody else. Again, Bava ben Buta was blind, and said, oh, what should we do with this stupid guy who kills all the Chacham? He says, no, we're not going to talk, you are out to we, we, we don't curse a king. He said, no, but no one's listening. No, but only this. He said, I'm not saying anything. And then Hordus realized that the Chacham are such special people. They won't even badmouth this Hordus person. He goes, I know who I am, that's Hordus. Had I known that the Chacham were so special, I would have never killed the Chacham. And what should I do? He said, Who kava Arishalaylam? Go and be and Leich and be Isaac Bibinyan Shalaylam. So Hordus went and he went and he rededicated the Beis Hamikdash. That's how the Gemara over there. When you collect money for a shul, could you first break down the shul and then build a shul and hoard this, hoard this Malchushani? If he says he's going to break down the Beis Hamikdash and rebuild it, we could trust him. And therefore, hoard this renovated the Beis Hamikdash. At the Gemara says, "Call me Shleirah Binyan hoard this. Whoever did not see the second Beis Hamikdash, the Binyan hoard this. Shleirah Binyan no miyamov and hoard this in general was a, was a madman. He built the Maras Machpelo and he built many different." edifice, big, big things in Eretz Yisrael, the famous Hordes uh, design of the rocks, you know, you go there, the archaeologist will show you that the famous, um, he had his insignia that he put in all the rocks, that there's like a, a border around every single rock, that was the style of Hordes, of Herod, and it all dates back to Herod and different, the Kaisa Maravi, everything that we have is from Binyan Hordes, 103 years, basically about 100 years before Chorben Beis Migdash, and now begins the years of the Romans. First Beis HaMikdash, Beis HaMikdash, Shlomelech builds yes. gorgeous, grand. Correct. All the Nisim Correct. Golui. Correct. Second base of Mikdash, we said, was a what, what, compromised version. Of Verk, and they tried to add in and add in and add in. And now, even the first base of Mikdash, already the Pasuk talks about, how, that was that was the Pasha Shkolem Haftarah. Then, in the days of Yoyosh, they had to like renovate it. It was already 200 years in, and they had to renovate it, and they collected a lot of money, and they figured out they had to renovate the first base of Mikdash. But, but again, that was only Ben Kabais. That was doing healthy renovations. But here, here it was... It was it was never... So it was built, the second was built in a mediocre Eifin. Exactly. But then you're saying at the end, in the last hundred years... Yeah. It, it, it exactly. So what, what, once we're at it, now, now that we see a perspective, it's, it is, it's Purim, famous, famous, beautiful piece that Ralph Hunter said on Purim, and he said the famous part that, that the Gemara says when he built a... Built it, it looked Ke'idva Sadiyama, the, the, he had blue and green tiles on the outside. And he wanted to, well, once we had, I don't, I don't want to spend time on this, but a beautiful, yes, beautiful shot. What? You want to spend time on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was not planning, I really was not planning on doing this. But Ke'idva Sadiyama, the outside looked Ke'idva Sadiyama, and it looked like the waves of the ocean. He wanted to cover it in gold. He said, no, this is better, Ke'idva Sadiyama, it looks like the waves of the ocean. So, what was the concept? He wanted it to look like the waves of the ocean. So he said the Pshat, he wanted to look at it because the waves of the ocean is Pshat, that really the world covered the whole entire, the, the water covered the whole entire world. But then, the Samti Chol Gavulayam, Hashem made um, sand as a Gavulayam. So the sand blocks water. It's an incredible thing. You know, when there's a hurricane, when there's a, a flood, sand blocks water. And therefore, the beaches are made of sand because it stops the water. And the waves come and want to take over the world again, and the sand stops it. And then it tries again. And every two seconds, the waves are coming to again. You know, by a tsunami, they succeed a little. And they want to go and take over the world again and take over the world again, but it stops it. And that's like the waves of the ocean. Even though you know you're going to fail, you know it's only a temporary thing, I'm going to put my all to it, even though I know I'm going to fail. So therefore, even though they knew the second base of Dosh only had 100 years left, this went all out and he made Binyan Hordes. Even though he knew it was Oymet to be Kharav, um, 
the Romans were already around, but still he put his all into the base of the base of Middash, and therefore they said, don't cover it, we want it to be Ke'idvus of the Yama, we want it to look like waves of the ocean, and therefore, that he was saying it on Purim, he was making big kabbalos on Purim, he goes, I know after Purim they're going to knock me down, and they're going to say, yeah, it was a shikha, the whole thing was nothing. I don't really care. I ain't this Purim, I'm going to do it, even though they're going to shoot me down, but I am doing this. Anyways, and that was the... A piece, a beautiful piece. Anyways, so that was Binyan Hordas, and now we should know. We don't give Binyan, we don't give Hordas credit. The the day that Hordas was 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 died, that was considered to be a a yomtif, and that was a special day that Hordas died. He was mamish a Russia. Hordas was terrible, even though he built all these things was mamish for his covet, and therefore Hordas is not given any credit. But <coughs> this moment of Hordas, the last 103 years, can also be considered the beginning of the Tanoim. So when did the Tanoim begin? The big Tanoim began somewhere, or basically around over here, the last 100 years of the second base. Amidosh is the beginning of the Tanoim. Apologetically, it is also the same time that our countings of 2023, 2023 starts. It starts here. This is where it starts. Chorban Beis Amidosh is roughly about year 68, 70, something like this. It's also roughly about 100 years before. And again, we mentioned, they say, who was it? Rabbi Shua ben Prachi. Rabbi Shua ben Prachi's Talmud. When Yanai killed out, and they were on the way back, and then he finally, he said, uh, right, you remember we said the story, and he, he pushed him away. He wanted to do tshuva, and he pushed him away, and says, don't be like uh, Elisha that pushed away Gechazi, don't be like Yeshua ben Prachi that pushed away the Yenna Talmud, and he became Yeshu. And again, that was the second half of the 103 Hashmanoi, and this is roughly where Yeshu comes along. He was, who knows, he, 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 he was some guy. But putting it in perspective, this is really where modern. Um, the last 2,000 years start. That starts with Tanoim, it starts with the end of the second Bishamidosh, it starts with the civil year, it starts with the Roman. Our world that we live in is so influenced by the Romans. Now the Romans themselves were so influenced by the Greeks. And that's why we also have a lot of Greek things, but we have such Roman, even just the Roman eagle. The eagle was the, was the, was the symbol of the Romans, and the, the eagle's on the American flag, and it's on... I don't know how many other flags and how many other national symbols have the eagle. The eagle is the Romans. Um, the Romans, the Gemara talks about that. Noito Pras, they, they, had, they had like Medicare and Medicaid and they had all, 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 all programs that they gave everyone money. And anyone who lived there and anything, they, they gave them everything. And the Romans um, gave entertainment and they built stadiums. What? Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. Yeah, they, they, they just stood everyone with, 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 with entertainment and food just to be quiet and just listen and let us rule you and let us make you forget about all your own sorrows and we'll just and they had the gladiators and they had and, and they created their whole culture to keep everyone busy like, like, like the hamster's wheel just everyone busy doing nothing so that they, they could run and, 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 and make you think and manipulate you. I'm telling you, we still live in, in that Roman world. That is the last 2,000 years, and that's the world that the Mishnah started from also. It's, like, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing. This is where, uh, if you want to call modern history, you know, the, the modern history, this is where it's beginning. Okay, so now we have Bing and Hordis. Now let's switch and let's talk about Tanoim. That's fascinating. Thank you. Because I, I was listening to something recently. Because Mishnais is the first time you come you come across with, with individual responsibility. And okay. The Tiger is all Klali, meaning Klali Israel Shiyuvim. Yeah. Mishnais talk about the individual Shiyuvim, meaning the that, that, that epic of that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that means, that we never talk about the responsibility of a Yachid. Maybe when he gets his own share, he can explain it. Very interesting. Okay, anyways, I, 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 I want to hear you. You'll explain to me. Does it mean the half of that? You're saying Divrei Beit Shammai, Divrei Beit Shammai? No, no. Okay, okay, you, you'll... Okay, here we go. Now, if we... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here we go. Meaning one person saying over Tyra? No. No, there's always a Yachid Chayv and something. Okay. Uh, Head yeah. for you. Okay, I, I, I'm, okay, here we go. I, 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 I'm, I'm fighting the thought, so let's, let's take it. Here we go. If we could break up the, the Tanum, we would do the first hundred years. 
the next um, 75 years and the next 75 years. I don't know if that's gonna work perfect, but we'll try it this way. Now, the first 100 years are the last 100 years of the Beis HaMikdash. Now, it starts with Hillel Vashamai. Hillel Vashamai, Hillel is this amazing, amazing person, and Hillel actually, um, what's it called? Was Hillel HaBavli, he, he grew up in Bavel, which again, there was a, there was a, a settlement in Bavel ever since Galus Yechonia, ever since... Uh, the Chayrish Mazger, they were always there, right? And there was the, still the the base the base medrash in Nardoi. That was, you know, uh, the shuffle. They they uprooted it and they brought it with them. Kirotz Avanas, right? Kirotz Avadecha Savaneha, and they still had Yena Beis Hamikdash. They still had Yena Shul in Nardoi that they brought along with them with Kolos Yechania. And there was always a Yishuv. There was always Torah in Babel, and comes Hilah Babli. He gets up and he moves to. Eretz Yisrael, and he learns under Shmai of Avtalian. This is before Hordas. He learns under Shmai of Avtalian, and that's the time that he didn't have a penny. He climbs up to the roof to hear Tyre Mepi Shmai of Avtalian, and then eventually he left, and Bar Shemi left because he, he was spared the wrath of Hordas when Hordas killed the Chacham. He was not there then, and now comes the new, the, the, huh? So we were shot, Tysus gets to, like, he killed all the Chacham, so, so uh, we were shot, uh, B'nai B'seir. But this is, when they, when they restart, when Hordas lets everyone come back, so who led Klai Yisrael? The B'nai B'seir. The B'nai B'seir, the Gemara M'sachim says, the B'nai B'seir are the people of B'seir, they were rich people, they were big time in Chacham, and they led Klai Yisrael, they were the Nasi. And the Gemara M'sachim tells us the story that one time they were not sure exactly when to bring the carbon on Erev Shabbos, the carbon Pesach on Erev Shabbos, and what do you do? Is it Deich Shabbos, not Deich Shabbos? And the Bnei Becerra, and comes Hillel, who had come back to Eretz Yisrael, and he gets up there and he says, no, this is what Shmai Vav Talian said, like this, and like this, like this, and they blow, and he, um, Hillel blows away Bnei Becerra, and Bnei Becerra, the Gemara elsewhere says, we should always learn Anvasom, we learn Anova from Bnei Becerra, and they said, you should, you should be. You, you should be uh, the, the, the Nasi. Why are we being the Nasi? Rebbe Yudhub is saying the Gemara, same people? Um, could be. I, no, Rebbe Yudhub is saying should be. Uh, it's, it's people like this, I think. Yeah? yeah. Okay, I don't know. There are some that identify it, but it seems that, like there's... It seems that he was later. Right, he was in time. Yeah, yeah, so I, I don't know, okay. But I mean, the Gemara says Rabbi Yudah Mimsei was in times of the Karm Pesach, because that was the whole thing, you know. He, he, right, 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 the, the Aliyah and the Tafdal. Yeah, it was earlier, maybe, Rabbi Yudah Fine, I, 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 I don't know. But, but the Bnei B'Seir go, and they stand up, and they say, you should be the Nasi, and Hillel, they institute Nas, Hillel to be the Nasi, and unbelievable, Hillel doesn't give up. He says, you think I'm better than you? I was just medactic with Shmai Vav Talion so well. That's how I know it. And you were not being medactic and Shmai Vav Talion so well. An amazing thing. Now, who is Hillel? Hillel the Anova. And we learn from Bnei Becerra, who gave, we learn Anova from Bnei Becerra, who gave it up to Hillel. And Hillel over there is like sharp, sharp Musser against them. It's like, a, it's a funny thing. Maybe Hillel, I don't know exactly. But Hillel now becomes the Nasi, and Hillel's the Nasi. Shammai is the... So Shammai. Last time about when did, the, when did the Nasi start? What do you mean? The, the, this role of Nasi. This role of Nasi is all the way from before, with the beginning of the Zugais. By the Zugais, one was a Abbezel, one was the Nasi. Well, that, that was already that was already by by, by the Antrik Middle of Ashen. Yeah. Okay. And here was the Nasi, and here was the Avbezin. Now you have the last one of the Zugais are Shammai Vihil. And they even argued on three things. Unbelievable. Shma, Shammai and Hillel oh. argued on three things. So to us, we're like, only three things? That's amazing. But this was a change. There was no such thing as a machlaikis. We have to appreciate. There was no such thing as a machlaikis. What do you mean there was no such thing as a machlaikis? They were medactic from the Rabbeim Bidiyuk. It was not like Neufech Midile. It's a whole different knech. By us, the whole Iker limit is to say Maibshat. The whole Iker limit is to see the way I see it. The whole Iker, but then the whole Iker limit was to be Mavatal and see what the Rebbe was saying. What the Rebbe was saying and be medactic in the words of the Rebbe and give a Reina Messiah, a pure Messiah, a pure tradition. Zero, zero, zero personality affected, zero perspective affected, just to say what the Torah says, and now suddenly Shammai and Hillel are arguing on three things, comes Talmidai Shammai and Hillel, and 
they're arguing with more than 300 things. Why? And the Gemara says, the Gemara's upset, that Shaloi Diktakum Mipi Rabbim um, well, well enough, and therefore they they had machlekesin. Why did they have machlekesin? Because they weren't hearing it perfect. They weren't hearing it perfect mipi rabbeisam, and therefore they were arguing. We're like all proud to learn it different. That, 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 that's that's our ikalimud. But we're like at the end, the tail end of this. But this is like a whole change. It was really the Messiah was perfect in the times of the Nevi'im. It was like. What, 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 what did Grada Yeshaya uh, was myself? He was myself, Gemara uh, and Shabbos, he was myself, different things. And um, the different uh, Shabbos, in Mishma, um, whatever, Shabbos, in Toshimi, Shabbos, Raglecha, Asher Chetzcha, the Dabra Dabra. So, but again, they, they were deliberately were myself. But here, the whole thing was to do exactly the way your Rebbe did it. Now, suddenly, the Gemara has a Taina, but Pnei Shalai Shimshu, Esra Baisam. Um, Kedai, that suddenly became Achleksen, and now you have Shammai, Shammai and Hillel, Bei Shammai, Bei Hillel, and Mamish, the Gemara Yavamas, Mamish, Nasa, Tairikish, Tei Tairis, and Lysha Skoidudu, but Melamich, Emes, Vashaloi, Mahavai. When we're going to have Machleksen, we're going to have Machleksen for the next 2,000 years, it was Emes, Vashaloi, Mahavai. They trusted each other, they loved each other. Machleksen are never, never, never personal. Leinimnu, Bei Shammai, Melamich, Bei Hillel. Now, Avada, they held, they were Mamzerim. So, but they trusted that you can only, you, uh, you, could, you could tell me who the yichas of this person was, and if you say, I trust you, we're not here to get each other. We love each other. And that is the theme of all the, of all the machlekes that's going to be um, forthcoming in the next who knows how many years is Malamich Emes Vashalim Mahavai, but now Nasa Yisrael Kishtei Tairis. Now suddenly we have Beishamai or Beishilal and begins the Tanom. So now, to really appreciate the Tanom, um, I have to credit Sevi Parnas and who he heard it from his eighth grade uh, teacher, something like this. And let's try to make two lists. And we'll even try to um, space it out with these things. So first of all, we have Hey Shag Shag Shai. Hey Shag Shag Shai. And that is Hillel had a son, Shimon, had a son, Gamliel Hazokin, Rabbi Gamliel Hazokin, had a son, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel, had a son, Rabbi Gamliel the Yavne, had a son, Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamliel, and had a son, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. So this is Hey Shag Shag Shai. This is father to son, father to son, all in the same. It goes from Hillel. Again, Hillel got it from B'nai Becerra. Had a son, Shimon, Shimon, Kamlil, and Hey Shag Shag Shai. Okay, once we get that, we just got all the Tano, all the, the whole generations from the beginning to the end of the Tano. Now, we can also say it different. And we could say we have Hillel, whose Talmud is Rabbi Yechanan ben Zakkai, whose Talmud is Rabbi Eliezer ve Rabbi Yehoshua, whose Talmud is Rabbi Akiva, whose Talmud is the five Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva, five Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva, which is Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yaisi, and Rabbi Lozer ben Shamua, or Rabbi Nechemia, and their Talmud was Rabbi Noah Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi was Makabal from all five, and he wrote the Mishnais. So, once we have this, we appreciate that no two Tanoim are the same. You have to know where they were in, in history. The first hundred years, there's no connection to the second, to the next section of, of Tanoim. The, the, where they were, what was going on, their challenges is like so different. You can't compare Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Shimon. Like Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Shimon are different worlds. It, they met each other, rather. Because Rav Shimon was, was, was a young Talmud and base Medrash when Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Yeshua was in the base Medrash. That's true. But it, they lived in a different world. Their challenges were different. Their accomplishments were different. So again, if we could just remember this, Hey Shag Shag Shai is father to son, father to son. We got from Hillel to Rabbi Yudha Anasi. And 
Rebbe Katamid, Rebbe Katamid is Hillel, Rabbi Yechem Ben Zakkai, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Akiva, the five Talmidim, Rabbi Yudha Nasi. So let's begin. Okay, now let's talk about the first. Oh, here we go. So now the Chorban is right over here. Is at the end of the hundred years. So, so let's begin. Um, the Gemara in Sukkot tells us, Shemayim Talmidim Hayolele Hillel, right? We know Hillel had 80 Talmidim, and who was there was, God of Shemakulam was Rabbi Yechen, it was, was Rabbi Yechen Ben Uziel, Omar Allah of Rabbi Yechen Ben Uziel, that Kol Eiv Shepheri Achagabov, they said about Rabbi Yechen Ben Uziel, that every bird that flew on top of him, Miyad Nisraf. Okay. And who was Kotl Shemakulam? Kotl could be an age or whatever Kotl Shemakulam was, Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai. Amr Allah of Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai, they say the Gemara in Sukkah Chavches, says, Amr Allah of Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai, Shlo Hiniach, Mikra, Mikra, Shlo, every single thing, Sichas Yiladim, Shichas Shedim, whatever, every Havai is not by Rabbi Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai knew every last thing on Beliba, and that was Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai. Rabbi Yechen Ben Zakkai, the Gemara there in Sukkah says, had a Talmud, Rabbi Eliezer, and like they say about Rabbi Yechem and Zakkai, they say about Rebbe Liezer. Okay, now this is the last hundred years. What was going on during the last hundred years? The last hundred years was the Romans. The Romans were taking over Yushalayim. The Romans were taking over Israel. The Romans were, 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 were a nuisance, but it was manageable. It was dealable. It was dealable. You were able to live life with the Romans. They were, it was difficult. And it was hard, and there were terrible things. I wouldn't want to minimize any single thing that there was. But living the life with the Romans was difficult. The, the real challenge that the Chachamim had was that the Chachamim, um, what's it called? That there were the Tzedukim, and there were the Bayonim. The Bayonim wanted the Romans out. Who were the Bayonim? Excuse my muscle, I hope I want to say it right. Maybe I shouldn't say it. <laughs> the Bayonim, may, may, maybe remind me of the IDF. You can say the IDF, that's what I was worried oh. for. <laughs> they were very, very passionate for Eretz Yisrael. They, and they felt, we're going to fight them. Never again. We're going to fight the Romans. We're going to kick out the Romans. We're going to go head on to the Romans. And we're going to win the Romans. One second. We're going to win the Romans. And we're going to get them. And the Chachom were, listen, you're not going to cut crack the concrete with, with muscles. You gotta crack, crack the concrete with your brains. That's the only way it's gonna work. You're not gonna win the Romans this way. And the Baryonim said, we're gonna win the Romans. How are we gonna stop World War II to, from coming? We're gonna, we're gonna train in Judo, and we're gonna train them in weapons, and we're gonna do, we're never gonna let the, an, a World War II, a Holocaust happen again. We're gonna win, we're gonna win. And the Chacham said, stop it. Stop it, you're not gonna win. You gotta get the Abish in the picture. <laughs> you know, it, it's just not gonna work. And therefore, the Baryanim were against the Chacham. So not only the, the, the Messiah, but just in dealing with the Romans, they couldn't deal with the Romans head on. They just had these Baryanim. And the situation got worse and worse and worse. And the Romans got stronger. And the Baryanim got even stronger. And the Romans were getting instigated because of these Baryanim. And the Romans were coming on stronger and harder. And the Chacham were like, stop the whole thing already. Relax. And it finally came to the fore at the end of the at the end of the, the hundred years. And the Bayonim, right, the Gemara and Gittin says the Bayonim burnt. They said no problem. The the Romans surround Yerushalayim. They said no problem. We can we can still steig away here in Yerushalayim, right? They had they had years of of wood. Uh, Kalba Savua had had all his stuff, and and since the success, they 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 could survive. The Bayonim said no. We got we we gotta make a war. They burnt down everything. They forced them into war. They forced them and there was a hunger in earth. So, and it was a terrible time. Let's pause for a moment before we get to the Chorban. Um, there was, there was Hillel. Now Hillel died and he had a son, Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon we don't know much about. We only know Reb Shimon existed because he's mentioned. But what he accomplished, what he did, we don't know what Reb Shimon we don't know much about Reb Shimon, and he had a son, Reb Gamliel Hazakin. So Reb Gamliel Hazakin is meant Hiskin Reb Gamliel Hazakin, she allowed Hai Mamel Chol Ruach. Hil Hazakin, Reb Shimon, Reb Gamliel Hazakin, Reb Gamliel Hazakin is not the Reb Gamliel we're familiar with. It was a Reb Gamliel Hazakin. He was a son, and he, and he was Reb Gamliel Hazakin. He had a son, Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel. Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel was actually 
together with Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol, was the first of the Asara Aruge Malchus. And they were taken by the Romans, and Tir Rabbi Shmuel Lasatzmai, with Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol, Tir Rabbi Shmuel Lasatzmai went up to Shemaim and said, is this taka true? The Romans are supposed to kill us. He said, yes, there's, there's a din. And Kacha, you're supposed to get killed. And this is the two of the Asara Aruge Malchus. Kemat, the other eight of the Asara Aruge Malchus are going to be later, during the Dura Shmad, which we have to get to. It's a whole different world. But the first two of the Asara Aruge Malchus, it's, like it's a pellet to connect. Asara Aruge Malchus is like two and eight. But it was there, and as we know, he killed he killed uh, Reb Shem Gamliel first, and then he, right, he picked up his head and some piv al piv, enov al enov, and then he was crying so much that his daughter, the daughter of the, of the executioner, of the emperor, I don't know exactly what, and came out and um, peeled off his head. Right? The Gemara says, he, he went into, the, into Rome and the Vatican over there and he saw the head of Reb Shem, of Reb Shem Gamliel, it's still there, Munach Baraymi, the head of Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol, and that was two of the Asari Gamalchus. But now Rabbi Shmuel Gamliel is killed very young. His son Rabbi Gamliel is not ready to be a Nasi. He's too young to be a Nasi. So Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, the Talmud of, of Hill, and now Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, Rabbi Yechem and Zakai lived to be 120. Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, Tesis is, it's funny, like Tesis is no historian. His historian is Pashat learning the Gemaras. And he brings a right here, right? It's a, it's a pellet to see how Tesis learns history, you know, from. <laughs> from the Gemara. He doesn't learn it because, you know, this is what it says in the history books. Tyson makes a cheshman that Rabbi Yechem Zakai was nifter somewhat after the Chorban. Let's say within 10 years after the Chorban, Rabbi Yechem Zakai was nifter. But Rabbi Yechem Zakai was a Nasi for, was a, was for 40 years. He was teaching. He was leading Klai Yisrael. So Rabbi Yechem Zakai was a good chunk of the last the last years of the second base Hamikdash, and he became the Nasi because Rabbi Shimon Gamliel was killed young before Rabbi Gamliel was able to be the Nasi, came Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, and he stepped in to be the Nasi in the interim. Okay, so now we have people. Now, who's the people that we're going to have during this time? I'm going to give this out, but I can't look at past what we're going to look because it's going to ruin everything. Um, you just take, you want to take them out? And here on the top line over here, I don't know if we have, sorry, I didn't know how many to make. <coughs> so if we see over here on the top line, the top line here has the first generation is, they didn't even have Hill over here, is Reb Gamliel Azokin, Reb Shimon ben Gamliel, Reb Yechem ben Zakai, Reb Hanina ben Daisa, Yenisa ben Uziel, Reb Tzodik, um, this is all people mention the Mishnayis, but again, this is not a time of Machlokes. The Machlokes is not, the Machlokes is Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Who's Beis Shammai? Who's Beis Hillel? Maybe that's what you're saying, they're still, it's still grouped into a Rabbim, no? Yeah. But we didn't have names of Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. It, it, it's just two, it's just two worlds. Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. There's not so many different personalities. We don't know so much of, of the names, the names are not so quoted in the Mishnahis and the Gemara of who was living during that time, and that was the time before the Chorban Beis Hamikdash. The Gemara Gittin comes and tells us the genius, the leadership qualities. I really want to finish Tanaim today, and the leadership qualities of Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. We know this Gemara, but I'm going to speak it out very quickly just to appreciate the kunz of Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. The kunz of Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. Amazing. And we see this thing in Rabbi Yechem and Zakai many times. Rabbi Yechem and Zakai is now stuck in Yerushalayim. He has the Baryonim. He can't even fight the Romans. He can't even get out of Yerushalayim because the Baryonim don't let it. The Baryonim don't let him talk to the Romans because he's going to like outsmart the whole, their whole system. They're trying to like um, get physical straight with the Romans, and Rabbi Yechem and Zakai is going to, you know, uh, c come from the other side. So the, the Baryanim don't even let him leave. Finally, finally, his rather his brother-in-law was the head Baryanim, and no, his nephew. His nephew was the head Baryanim, the Gemara Gittin, and he finally says, "I just I got to go speak to the the one who was." who was surrounding Yerushalayim, the general then was Aspasianus Vespasian, and he was not yet an emperor, he was not yet a Caesar, and he was the general, Vespasian was the general, Vespasian is the one who built the Colosseum, Vespasian was, well, eventually became a Roman Caesar, a major, major Roman Caesar, and he, it could be he's the one who built Caesarea, uh, Caesarea, 
in over there in the northern part of Eretz Yisrael, and he he's the one who who is um, who, who who brought Rome to. To, brought Rome into a world of entertainment, into culture. He was a very, very influential person, and he was the general that was in charge of the Roman legions surrounding the U, surrounding Yerushalayim. Anyways, Rabbi Yechem Zakeh wanted to go see him. Rabbi Yechem Zakeh made believe he was dead, right? And his two Talmidim carried him out. Who's the two Talmidim, by the way? Rabbi Loz and Rabbi Yeshua. That was his two Talmidim who carried him out. They were then Talmidim. Um, during the Chorban Beis Hamidosh, the times before the Chorban Beis Hamidosh, Rabbi Akiva was living during the, he was much younger, he was, he was an old, uh, yeah, I'm saying he was much younger, he was maybe within the first 40 years, I have no idea. But, they carry him out, they carry him out of Yushalayim, and Rabbi Yechem ben Zakeh goes to the general, Vespasian, Aspasionis, and he says, Shalom Alecha Kesar, right, the famous Gemara, Kesar, he goes, hey, if I'm the Caesar, so you got killed twice. First of all, what are you making fun of me? I'm not a Caesar, I'm just a general, you don't, you don't make these mistakes. Second of all, if I'm the Caesar, why don't you come till now? He said, because I don't want to tell you that you were just appointed Caesar. You yourself don't even know, but you are, the Caesar died, and you have been appointed by the Senate to be the Caesar. So just then, a message comes flying in all the way from Rome. I want to tell you, you were just declared to be the Caesar, and he is unbelievable impressed with Rabbi and Zakai. He says, Rabbi and Zakai, I, I'm blown away by you. Tell me, what could I do for you? He says, I want three things. Ten li yavne v'chacha meho, ten li shushalisa the Reb Gamliel, and give me a, a doctor to heal Reb Tzadik. Unbelievable. So he asked for Yavna, spear the city of Yavna. Next, we need leadership. Keep the family of, of Reb Gamliel whole. Protect them. Don't harm them. And we also need siyata dishmayu. We need Reb Tzadik. We, 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 we also need, you know, capital tell them. We need a doctor to heal Reb Tzadik. Reb Tzadik was fasting 40 years that the Beis should not be destroyed. Unbelievable. Zuck the Gemara. Never. What was Rabbi Hamid Zakai thinking? He should have said, don't do, destroy Yerushalayim. He would have listened to him anything. So Gemara, he thought, they're not going to listen to me. It's not going to work. But at least this we could do. Rabbi Hamid Zakai was an unbelievable. Rabbi Hamid Zakai said, I'll give up the Beis Hamidosh. I'll give up the big one. I'll give up the big cat, I'll big up the big prize, and I'll chop a small one. And he got Torah and Yiddishkeit to survive under the nose of the Romans. He said, we're going to leave Yerushalayim. We're giving up Yerushalayim. Even living in Eretz Yisrael, that's what we were talking about before. Even living in Eretz Yisrael doesn't come close to keeping Torah and Mitzvahs alive. We'll give up Yerushalayim. We'll let the Beis Hamidosh be destroyed. We'll let that. But we're going to have Yavna, the capital, a new capital of Torah. And we're going to have Yavna, and we're going to have Chachameha, and we're going to have Messias, and we're going to have Rav Shem and we're going to have Kedusha, we're going to have Rav Tzaddik there, and done. And he managed to escape everyone out of Yerushalayim, and he let the Baryan go. You deal with the Romans head on. The Romans came in, killed everyone, destroyed the Beis HaMikdash, terrible everything, and where was everyone? It was the most first Seder during that time. They weren't even there. They only found out later that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. They were there steiging away in Shanghai. The world could be drool, who knows what. They are steiging away in Yavne, and they are, they have the Kerem de Yavne, they have a new Sanhedrin going, they have a Nasi, they have everything is steiging away, and he said, I'm going to give up on the big one. And, and it's even a machlekes in the Gemara, for Rabbi and Zakai was right or wrong. For Rabbi and Zakai changed the face of Torah. So again, here, where is Torah? Here, Torah was in Yerushalayim. And then, Torah is changed. Torah now becomes the center of Torah, the capital of Torah, is in Yavne. And he sucked them out. Another thing of you, the Gemara says, after the Chorban Beis Hamikdash, they said, "We're not going to eat wine. We're not going to. We're not going to eat meat. We're not going to drink wine. We're not doing this." We're not. Rabbi Yechem and Zakai said, "Stop. You want to remember the Beis Hamikdash? We're going to take the rule of seven days Zechel Hamikdash, and we're going to have a few different things, and that's going to remain forever and ever." The, the, the magna, magna loss of losing the Beis Hamidosh, they were ready to kill themselves. So, Rebbe Chaim Zakeh, it's not going to list. In, in 10, 15 years, you're going to give it all up, and then what are you going to have left? Nothing. 
I'm going to give up on the big thing that we're all passionate about, and we're going to keep the small ones. But that small one, we're going to keep. And it's going to be real, and it's going to be lasting, and it's going to be forever, and that is the way to keep things going. Rabbi Yechon Mazaka was able to see the, as you told say, Rabbi Yechon Mazaka was able to see the bigger picture. And his kin Rabbi Yechon ben Zakai, Shafil and Rosh Hashanah, we're not going to go to the Rosh Hashanah, we'll do this, but now we'll always have a Bezdin to be Makad HaShachadosh. We're not going to go to the big center. We should, and that's the way it should be. And in the grand scale, that's the, the ideal setting. You're right, but that's going to corrupt everything else. We're not doing that. That was Rabbi Yechon ben Zakai. Keep on saying, we'll give up on the big, pa- on the big package for an everlasting thing, even though if that's smaller, and that was Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, and Rabbi Yechem and Zakai really switched the capital of Tyra from that until, from Yishlaim until Yavne. Who was the Vespasian, and afterwards comes Titus, Titus is Titus in the world, Titanium, Titus is like, is like mega strong and and the most unbelievable thing, and it really comes from the fact that he managed, right when second Vespasian became emperor, so he sent his son, Titus, to become the new, um, to become the new general, after he destroyed the base of Middash, and um, Vespasian died, so there, then they got Titus to become the, 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 the Caesar, and now Titus becomes the Caesar, and they have a new period that they're in Yavne, and then there's another Caesar, another Caesar comes, now they're in Karen de Yavne, Reb Gamliel, Reb Yechem and Zakai dies a few years later, Reb Gamliel is Nasi, they have, if you look over here, who's living during that time, who's living during that time, we have Reb Gamliel, we have, a second, the, the Gemara, the, the Mishnah in, the Mishnah in, in the beginning of Ovis says, right, all the Zugais, after Hillel comes Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. After Rabbi Yechem and Zakai, Shmeinat Chamisha Talmidim Hayuloi Le Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. Rabbi Loza ben Aroch, um, Rabbi Loza, Rabbi Leizer ben Horkinus, Rabbi Yeshua ben Chananya, Rabbi Gamliel, and that is that generation. They're a generation on top of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Tarfin, Rabbi Loza ben Azariah, which we have to get to, and that is the time. Who's who's leading now? Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua are the Zakanim, are the elders, and Rabbi Gamliel is the Nasi. Rabbi Gamliel is actually a brother-in-law of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi, Rabbi Gamliel married the sister of, yeah, it was the opposite. I'm trying to remember, he was saying Tachnan and he, he missed the Tachnan, and therefore Rabbi Gamliel was Nifter. Anyways, they were brothers, Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Eliezer. Now, who are the personalities? Okay, I don't know Rabbi if we could. Rabbi Eliezer Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus. Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus. Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus was first a nothing, right? We know the Gemara. He was Perka the Rabbi Eliezer. He was nothing, and he said, no, I want to go learn Torah. And he went to go learn by Rabbi and Zakai. That's again, before the Chorban, he went to go learn by Rabbi and Zakai. And it was Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. And Rabbi Eliezer was tough as nails. Rabbi Eliezer was a fighter. And he was a fighter because he came from nothing, and he fought his way through. And he was a fighter, and no matter what, he would, he would win, and and he would win. And Rabbi Eliezer, and he was like Kodamal. I want to hear such a beautiful word. Rafuna, I heard he said uh, Rabbi Eliezer. The Gemara, the Gemara uh, in Sukkot also says, he, um, no one ever came before him in the base medrash, and no one ever left after him in base medrash. He was always the first to come. He was always the first to leave, and and he never found him so means he was learning in the base the whole entire time, and he never went and he never went, so he was the first one in the base manager, last one in the base manager. Who's the base manager of Klai Yisrael? The Mishnayis. Who's the first one mentioned in Brachas? Rabbi Eliezer Aymer. And who's the last one mentioned in Sechtas Uksin is Rabbi Eliezer Aymer, Rabbi Eliezer, also the Akash Brachu, Lahachu. And he's the first one in the base manager, the last one in the base manager. Rabbi Eliezer is the Rabbi Eliezer. And Rabbi Eliezer, you couldn't argue with Rabbi Eliezer. And they tried to argue with Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer stood up and said, If I'm right, right, that's the Gemara. That's more over there by Tanu Shalach Noi. If I'm right, let the let the river flow backwards. If I, the Basco came out, I don't care about. And they said, I don't care about Basco. I don't care the river could flow this way. And I don't care this. He says, if I'm right, let the walls come in. And the walls start caving in. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua was the opposite. Rabbi Yeshua was always calm. Rabbi Yeshua was confidence. 
Rabbi Yeshua, right, that, that the Gemara, Rabbi Yeshua didn't look necessarily so good, right, that he, he, he made a, he said, Chochma Mefuara Bechlima Chor, you could have such beautiful Torah and such a disgusting vessel. He said, yeah, go put all the wine in the Ketzav Ezov, and you'll see what happens, and it's going to go. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua was able to always um, wear, ward off all the Apikarsim and all those who came to argue on the Torah and all the Romans. Rabbi Yeshua was calm, was confident, had always the right answer, always very accepting. Rabbi Yeshua was, Rabbi Yeshua was, was, was the opposite. And here comes the walls crashing in because Rabbi Yeshua is right. Rabbi Yeshua says, and I'm going to the walls, don't come in. And the wall stayed. It's on the way in. It didn't cave in. And they say, I don't really care. Rabbi Yezer, we're not passing like you. You may be right. We're not passing like you. And and they send Rabbi Yezer out of base Medrash. And Rabbi Yezer has to leave the base Medrash. And he was in Cherem. And what do right? Yotzah Baskelon said, "Netzchunai bonei, netzchunai." Rabbi Yezer is better right. But if the Chacham not makabel, netzchunai bonei, netzchunai. Ah, Boch Hashem, my kindleach won over me. And the halacha is not the way I wanted it to be, because that's what the Torah was not is not loy b'shemaimi. The Torah was given al aretz, and that was Rabbi Yezer, Rabbi Yeshua, and Rabbi Yezer. Had his yeshiva, but Rabbi Lezer Shamutihu. Shamutihu also means Beishamai. It was like the Beishamai and the Beisilo. Beishamai, uh, we forgot to talk about Beishamai and Beisilo. Beishamai was, was the truth. And Beisilo was, you have to understand how the world is. Who was Beishamai? Shamai was, you got a 70 on the test, you got a 70 on the test. Hillel says, yeah, Lamaisi, you studied it very hard, you had a headache that day. It's going to make a very big difference what your mark is if you're going to get into. Uh, I don't know, college, it can't go on your transcripts, you have to understand, let's fit, let's fit, let's figure it out. That was Hillel. Hillel was an Anvason, he was a Savlon, he accepted responsibility, and he, he, he understood the whole picture. He understood the whole picture. And Shammai, Shammai was the truth. The truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. If you got a 70, you got a 70. If you got a 60, you got a 60. I don't care what went, if you did, you did. And he wants me, you can't do it, to chase him out by Amos Abinion. Don't, don't, don't start with me. Hillel said, let's figure this out. We'll work it out. And then you had two generations. You had Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Again, Rabbi Eliezer Shamutu, he, he, was, a, he was a Shammai. And, and, and they said, no, that's not the way we do things. Even though Rabbi Eliezer learned by Rabbi Yechon and Ben Zakkai, who learned by Hillel. But Rabbi Eliezer was a, Rabbi Eliezer was a fighter. And that was Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. And Rabbi Yeshua was... I don't know the exact time, but we're going to just jump into the beginning of the next generation. We have Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Akiva and all this, and then we have Rabbi Gamliel, who is the Nasi, and the Gemara in Brachas, three times he made Rabbi Yeshua, he, he chepped Rabbi Yeshua, he made Rabbi Yeshua come, and then someone asked, the Gemara said, who was that? It could be that Bachar who asked the Shiloh was Rabbi Shimon. Huh? Yeah, it's my Rabbi Chaiva, and he says like this, he goes, yeah, but someone else told me. He told Rabbi Gamliel, but someone else told me the other way. He stands up and goes, who is that person who argued on me? Rabbi Yeshua, the, the Zokin, Rabbi Yeshua stands up, says it was me. He goes, you stand. You stand during the shir. Rabbi Gamliel is busy saying shir, and, 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 and the elder, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua, has to stand. Rabbi Gamliel is saying shir, Rabbi Yeshua is standing. So finally, they told the Metorgamon, be quiet. Who's the Metorgamon? The Metorgamon is the microphone. So now Rabbi Gamliel is saying shir. No one can hear what he's saying. <coughs> Rabbi Yeshua is standing. Everyone's uncomfortable, the whole thing fell apart, and then they voted Rabbi Gamliel out, and they said, we can't have Rabbi Gamliel anymore, we can't put in Rabbi Yeshua. Now, Rabbi Gamliel was Adam Ismanish already a while ago. Now comes Rabbi Yeshua, we can't put in Rabbi Yeshua, he's the Balmaisa, we can't put in Rabbi Akiva, because Rabbi Akiva is Ben Gerim. We'll put in Rabbi Loza ben Azair. Rabbi Loza ben Azair was only 18 years old. Okay, Harani Kibben Shivim Shono, and then Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Gamliel said, I'm not coming in. We knocked, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yeshua said, I'm not coming in. You knocked out Rabbi Gamliel. How can you knock out Rabbi Gamliel? Again, this is the fire going on in the Kerem de Yamna, this unbelievable creation that, that, Reb, that Rabbi Yechem and Zakai created, but it is about to come to a very, very difficult challenge. I wish we would have finished. And I think we're going to have to pause for now. But Ezra Sashem, we didn't even get to finish that. Okay. If we thought we'd get it in eight, I don't know if we're going to get it in eight. And we may have to jump to nine. But if not, we won't finish it. If, 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 if we don't finish it, it's fine also if we don't finish it. And the Abish Zelf invite there. But let's stop here. Yashukayach. Yeah.